Hello everybody, welcome to week six of our Christian Genetics video series. This week we are going to talk about Grizzle. Grizzle is a autosomal dominant gene. Now in week number three, or video three, we talked about an autosomal dominant gene spread. Now the difference between how Grizzle works versus how spread works, since they're both autosomal dominant, is Grizzle would be known as a co-dominant or partial dominant. People don't really agree on those terms, so I'll just call it a co-dominant. Basically, like with spread, I mentioned how if you have one or two doses, you can't visually tell, that you have to breed the bird out to tell. Grizzle's not the same way. You can tell the difference between one dose and two doses of grizzle. And that's what I have in my hands right here. This is a blue grizzle. Now, it also has bronze with it, but you see the red shining through. But this is just a blue with the grizzle gene. Um, this is a heterozygous grizzle, just this one dose of grizzle. You can still see the, you know, the normal blue tail that you'd see on any blue bar. This also has the same tail, but this is mainly a white bird. They call these prints or just stork marked. And this is a homozygous grizzle, two doses of grizzle. I actually showed you these in video number three where I was talking about spread. I showed you this with the black tail as well with the spread gene added. So when you add the spread gene to this, the only difference is the tail just goes completely black. This one's molting, so it's not all even, but there you can see. So with this one, just a regular blue grizzle, when you add the spread gene, this is what you come out with. So it's more like the prints, except it gets the coloring in here. These they just refer to as black models. But it's still it's the same grizzle gene, it's just added the spread gene on top. So now we have a black tail, and then it also changes the way that the grizzle is expressed. And here's another example. This is also a black grizzle. This one is just very, very dark, obviously. A little bit of grizzling there, and then mainly just in the head, and you got a little right there. But this is just a this is just a blue spread heterozygous grizzle. Now I talked about in video number one how ash reds don't work the same, don't work the same as browns and blues. I don't have any browns in here, but if you had a brown grizzle, they, they express the same as the blues do. But here is an ash red bar grizzle. That's all this is. It's an ash red bar with grizzle. Now, if you go back to the video number five from last week, you can see I showed an ash red bar and a cream bar when we were talking about Duluth. All the ash in the body pretty much gets turned to white. There is no tail bar. If you remember video when we talked about the sex linkage, here's a fleck here that indicates that this bird is a cock. But yeah, most of the red in the neck is washed out. The bars are still there, obviously, in the shield, but all the ash just turns to white. That's because ash red and grizzle, they do the opposite thing with the feathers. Ash red removes the outer extremities of the pigment of the feather, and grizzle does the inner. So in combination, they pretty much turn the bird white. Here's, here's the same thing as the red, but with a cream bar. No different, just except the red's now cream. Now this bird is an ash red bar spread homozygous grizzle, which is mainly white. So this is the same as that. Well, if this bird had a black tail, this would be the same thing except on a red-based bird. So with red, it goes to white. Now even with these, if you just breed prints together, over time, the more grizzle you breed to grizzle, the whiter it becomes. But I don't think you'd ever get a pure white with, uh, with the blue-based birds. But the black flights and the, and the tail will start to turn white. Here's uh, some grizzles with New York flying flights. All the other birds have been tipplers. Don't mind the white flies. Again, that has nothing to do with the grizzle. Might be a different thing. But yeah, this is, there's different forms of grizzle. 
there's there's a gene called under grizzle, there's white grizzle, there's also tiger grizzle. And this is probably a different grizzle because it doesn't really express the same as tipplers do. These are our only grizzle flies. We've never bred them, they're just pumpers. And now we don't know for sure, but I believe that this is heterozygous, meaning one dose of grizzle, and this is homozygous, two doses of grizzle. That's why people with flights, they always say you gotta breed the, the good grizzles to the bad ones. Because if you just breed these to these, they become more and more white, and you don't want that. But this is like generally what you want. This is really dark for a grizzle. But yeah, so you can have one dose or two doses of grizzles. And just like spread, it's inherited the same way. So if you were to breed this print, which has two doses of grizzle to just a normal blue bar, 100% of your offspring would be blue grizzles like this, because they would all get one dose of grizzle. I don't have any examples, but you could probably get an idea just from looking at these, and I'll post up some pictures. But like I said when we were talking about recessive red in video number four, that it's epistatic to everything except recessive white and albino. Other things can still work with it, like grizzle. If you add grizzle to a recessive red bird, you get a red model. And then same if you add dilute, you get a yellow model. And then based on whether they have one dose of grizzle or two, depends on how white they are, you know. So I'll show you pictures of those, but yeah, you can have grizzles with those as well. So building on everything we've talked about this through this series, all of these are intense colored birds. Well, actually, I have one dilute in there, the, the cream bar. You can have a blue bar. You can have a blue bar spread, dilute, grizzle, and you can add recessive red on that as well. All these genes can, can be on together. So, also, let me mention that there's other genes like pied that turn, that work with pigeons to make them white. Like that's what these flights are. This is, this is a result of the pie gene, the white flights. That has nothing to do with the grizzle. Now if you have pied, like here it's controlled. There's different kinds of pied. They're not fully understood. But with the flights, it's really, it's a controlled gene, meaning it stays with the flights. But other times pied is just totally random and you get a spot here, a spot there. You can tell the difference because unlike grizzle where it's like kind of alternating black and white or whatever color it is in white, with pie, there'll just be like a patch or just random spots like you threw a pie at somebody. If pie ever hits the eye, the eye turns to what's called a bull eye, which is essentially just black. So that's a way to always tell. And with the bull eye, it's not, it doesn't change the eye, it just dilutes its pigment. You can still see the iris in there if you look. Now, I was talking about different kinds of grizzles and how the flights is more than likely a different grizzle than the tipplers. That's just based on what we've seen. I've never seen anybody write about that or anything. But like, if you see a blue grizzle flight, it's totally different than a blue grizzle tippler. And like I was saying, how the tipplers two doses turns it into a print, a stork mark bird. With homers, it doesn't do that. With homers, you just kind of get the same thing as what you see with just one dose with the tippler, except a little bit more white. It doesn't change it to a stork mark bird. And the other types of grizzles, there's under grizzle, which to be honest, I don't know much about. You can look into it. There's white grizzle, which I believe gets wider and wider as it molts. There is um, tiger grizzles, which start off mainly black and then molt into a grizzle, kind of like uh, what is it, the Danish high flyers do, or the Dutch high flyers do with, uh, with the red white sides, how they turn to white. The grizzle does the same thing there. But yeah, look into it. There's all different kinds of grizzle. But from what I think these two different kinds probably cover most breeds, most expressions. Well, thanks for watching video six about grizzle. Next week, video seven, we will talk about what's usually referred to as the darkeners, the three genes, dirty, sooty, and smoky. But yeah, we'll get into those genes next week.